Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome Hello. to Stealing Our Own Success. Uh, I'm Mark Lawrence, the CEO of AFEM, the Association for Electronic Music. We're the, the global voice for electronic music, operating now in 34 countries around the world with around about 140 members. And uh, we tackle the issues that are unique or significant to electronic music. And uh, I think everyone agrees that piracy is one of those significant, significant subjects. And I've got uh, three of our members here today. Uh, I'd like you to introduce yourself first, so over to you. I'm Ben Rush. I'm CEO and founder of Audiolog. Uh, we're an anti-piracy company specialising in the music industry. Been going for seven years. Uh, I used to be a DJ, so sort of got the background in the music side uh, and then ended up getting involved very heavily in the tech side. But uh, to put it in perspective, we focus a lot on our dance music side of things and we do about a million links a week that we take down. So it uh, gives you an idea of just how much there is actually out there. Uh, hi, my name is Stuart Knight. I uh, am the founder and director of Tool Room Records. Uh, we've been going as a record label now for 13 years. Uh, we have a record label, publishing company, management company, um, I think that's about it. Events arm, we do as well. Um, and yeah, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest labels on Beatport at the moment. Um, and yeah, that's us. Uh, my name's Jack Bridges, and I uh, head up the label management team uh, at Beatport. Um, you know, working directly with artists and labels and suppliers um, across, uh, you know, globally. Um, and Beatport is considered sort of one of the number one destinations for electronic and dance music. Thanks, guys. So, um, probably throughout the two days, you'll hear lots of discussion about piracy and anti-piracy and peer-to-peer -peer and zippy share and, and the rest of it. And the reason this is called stealing our own success will, will become clear as we go through the panel today. Um, about a year ago, we started looking at the piracy market. We, all, we, we worked with Audio a lot very closely. We disrupted a few sites. But what we started to do was to see the hidden piracy that's on a scale that I don't think anybody really appreciates. I think traditionally the music industry looks at piracy as peer-to-peer, -peer, zippy share, and all those things that you can go in a Google and search for and, and pops up. And everybody thinks that everybody's breaking those sites now and everybody thinks that because of Spotify and YouTube that, that uh, piracy is on the wane. But there's in fact an enormous piracy market, an illegal market, which is a paid-for market with an enormous amount of money washing around with it, where DJs pay something like 30 euros for about three months' worth of, of unlimited downloads, about, about 30 euros. Um, the amazing thing about these sites is that they're, A, they're still operating, and B, what they look like, which we'll, we'll get into later. We've estimated that the value of these paid-for illegal sites is about 10 times the total value of Beatport, TrackSource, Apple, Juno, and any other store that you can find. And so imagine as an artist, I'm sure, let's put some hands up, who's, a, who's an artist? Who's a publisher? Who's a label? Okay. So imagine that you are earning 10 times less than you should do, or imagine that you could earn 10 times more than you are. How different would your world be if that was the case? So the first question is, is, is for your good self, which is what do you know about the sites? What can you tell us? Well, I'm going to get up and just chuck up a slide, hopefully, to show you a little bit about it. But I mean, one of the things that we've seen uh, a lot of is the preconception that in the dance music world that downloads are on decline. People are buying less music, and it's really our belief that actually people are buying music. They're still out there buying, but they actually are buying it from places that they think are legitimate. So can someone tell me what this site is? Do you want to recognize it? No? Well, it... It is, and in fact looks very similar to this site, which is uh, our good man over here, Beatport. Now, the thing is, the difference is that while Beatport is charging, you can see there the per sort of download on the right there price. This one, as Mark alluded to, is paying a monthly subscription. You know, it's all you can eat. So you pay your $30 a month and you can download as much as you like. And as you'll see, the majority of the content is very, very similar. And so this is a really big problem because we did uh, a similar sort of talk at uh, ADE and half the people in the room identified the first slide as Beatport. 
And so if they can't tell the difference between the stores as well, then it becomes a bit more of a problem. In fact, uh, here's the sort of pricing and things that they put onto there, which is pretty crazy. But people actually think that these sites, they're paying money to it, therefore it must be legitimate, and the money is therefore going through to people like Tall Room, the good selves, and uh, the, the artists are getting paid for it, but they're not. And you can see here, you've got even sort of staff picks, so these sites are actually you know, being properly looked after and they're driving traffic to it, but people do think that they're actually paying money and therefore it's going through to the artist. There is that assumption, but really that is not the case. And you get a lot of specialist sites you know, like this appearing as well. Um, this one is um, another example of uh, misinformation. Okay, so Soundio has been around for absolutely ages. The guys at Beatport, I'm sure, are very well aware of it as well. Uh, and it promotes itself as, again, a download store. You pay a premium subscription to get access to it. And it's got on their DJ sort of with their little testimony you're saying how great it is. Now, when this becomes a real problem is when you have people releasing their records saying you can get it at Juno, Beatport, or Soundio, and it's your own track. And these are pirate sites, and that's actually the producers saying it themselves. And I wish it was the only one, but it really isn't. Unfortunately, you can just look through Facebook and through Twitter, and you'll find thousands of these. So it's a real sad state of affairs that actually, you know, they do look like really, really decent sites. Um, and yet, they are entirely pirates. So, um, you know, it is people thinking that they're paying the money to the sites, that they're paying money to the artists, and all's good, when in fact, it just really isn't the case at all. So question one is, where does the money go? Well, in the case of these ones, the, the money is getting uh, taken by payment acquirers in the same way as Beatport uses, you know, Visa uh, or MasterCard or PayPal services, all of those. The money goes through them, gets into an account. Um, and that can actually be, from um, PayPal's point of view, anyone's own sort of little uh, sort of account at home. And you can make up a little web page, say it's a business, and all of a sudden they go, yeah, it's a legitimate business. And you can have, you know, all the limits are lifted and you can have tens of thousands of pounds coming down into your current account, essentially. Um, and so the way to tackle these sites really is actually going through the payment providers themselves. Um, and this is the problem. It's, and it's the tackling, yes, the payment providers to take down these sites, but it's the education to everyone here around the wider world uh, within the dance music industry that this is actually happening and that, you know, these aren't legitimate stores. How do we tell the difference? How can, you know, the individual tell the difference? Because at ADE, we had the biggest problem that majority of people, some people said, crap, we're actually paying these people. We thought that that was a legitimate subscription as well. So, Stuart, moving to you, as the, as the governor of Tool Room, a pretty sharp intake of breath at this point from you. <laughs> Just a bit. Um, Should well, they be taken Mark down? appear on one of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the, the Brothers <laughs> Records up there as well, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's killing the lifeblood of what we do. You know, if you imagine it a little bit like a field of strawberries, if you pick all those strawberries, there's no strawberries left. And there's going to be a, there's gonna be a, a, a gap until the, either the new strawberries grow or will they ever grow again because the fields have been raped. And that's essentially what these guys are doing. You know, I, I need to generate revenue from sites like Beatport, uh, iTunes, TrackSource, all the, the, the ones that Mark's mentioned, in order to sign the next record, in order to bring the next kid through that's, that, that, that's got talent. That, and believe me, these, they're, they're, not for, they're not big lumps of money that we're getting. They're enough, you know, to help market and, and keep the wheels turning. If this carries on any further, it will kill the cash cow. It will kill the opportunity for people like us to be able to go out and source new talent. Um, so yeah, as Ben said, you know, I would really, really hope, um, and, it's, and it's definitely something I'm going to be really looking into it personally and, uh, and as, a, as a label to try and stop this because it's killing what we do. You know, this carries on. There will be no BMC. There'll be because where's the where's the money being generated? You know, Beatport can't run quick enough to catch up with these people. You know, no site can run quick enough. It's about us lot collectively owning our scene and actually saying, no, we're not going to stand for that. We're going to pay the artists because we want to be that artist at one point and we want to get paid. So it, for me, very serious problem and something collectively we should really, really stamp out. And I think the scary thing here is that, you know, the assumption has been, you know, everyone wants to move to streaming and that's, you know, where people want to pay money into. No one is buying the download or anything. But now actually people, they have the money, they are paying the money, but it's not getting through to the labels. And that's the, the scariest thing for yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, what these do show is that there is a massive appetite still for, for downloading music. And these people that pay 
for unlimited downloads. I mean, I don't even know what they're doing with them. Some people, they're just collecting huge volumes of, of drives um, just because they're kind of almost addicted to, to that collection ele element to it. Um, but the education of it, I think, is, you know, there needs to be maybe better sharing of information between people as well um, and the, the, the SEO of it um, so that, you know, you're not putting someone, Mark Knight, into Google and the first thing that's coming up is, is not Beatport or iTunes or, or someone like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's shocking sometimes. Even recently in the news, well, there's been lots of stories about kind of Beatport and is it going to survive through its kind of, you know, next um, challenge. And people were talking about, oh, you know, what, what other legitimate places are there to, to get your, your music from? And people were writing Soundio and even like this blogger won't mention them, that, that they're, you know, a name. And they said, oh, cool, we'll check it out. Um, and it's just, it, it's baffling to us, but to the young kind of 15-year-old user on the internet from, you know, wherever, they're not being presented with something that's saying that this is dodgy. They're actually going on there, and lots of the sites are really reinforcing that their money is going into the industry and going to DJs and labels. Yeah, just just one thing I, I would also say to, 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 to you guys out there who, who buy music or, or like to enjoy music. You know, I go back to my days when I first got involved 15, 20 years ago. I went to a record shop. And I trusted in that guy behind that counter to tell me what was cool, what was coming up. You have to put the trust in people like Beatport, TrackSource, the, the people that work in there, and why we, to be honest, enjoy working with legitimate platforms. They have skilled, knowledgeable people working there that, under, that, that know what's going to be a big record. They know the ins and outs of the scene. These lot, they know nothing. All they want to know is how to extract money from your pocket. So they're never gonna they're never gonna educate you any further, or maybe suggest a new style of music to, to listen to, maybe give you a new act to come up. That's what Beatport does. That's what Track Sorts does. These guys have skilled people that have been in the industry that are tastemakers, influencers. That they they know what's coming up next. They know what's going to be a big record, and they'll they'll share that with you. This won't take you on an educational journey. This will just extract money from your pocket and kill the scene that you want to be involved in. I mean, to give you an idea of some of the people actually behind some of these sites is, um, you know, we have absolute uh, proof that certain sites are just using stolen credit card data to then go and purchase from more legitimate stores to get it in the first place. And that's a whole sudden dark world that, you know, you're suddenly involved with and you're actually putting funds into without even really realising it. So what do you make of the counter argument and, and the view from some that this is actually the new business model for DJs, that this is actually proving a successful business and, and that taking down is, is not the answer, it's actually about embracing it? It's it, what, and what I've heard a lot of them say, you know, and, and been approached as a, as a label owner, you know, um, could I have some of your music? What it will do, th you know, th this will put your music in front of 100 people. It's great promo. We promo our records to 20 people. 20 people, t 20 influencers, that, you know, and that will range from Annie Mack, Pete Tong. Now, yeah, in an ideal world, I'd love to be able to give everyone free music. I can't. I, I, it, well, it's not a sustainable business model. But the second part of it, you've got to earn the right to have a promo. You know, Annie, Pete, all them, they've earned the right to have a free a promo record from me. They're an influencer. You know, you... you Recently, what's happening over the last, I don't know, year, 18 months, the journey from the kid in his bedroom to the superstar, everyone thinks it's, it's, it's like that. It's not. You know, um, my brother was a 10-year overnight success. You know, that's what you have to put into it. And as a record labour, label, as a management company, we're looking for people that want to put in that apprenticeship. We don't want the kid that just wants stardom or wants to go from point A to point B as quick as he can. We want the kid that wants to learn it and we can, and we can mould and we can shape and we can give advice to and learn it that way. So, you know, these, these companies that also will say it's a great promo service if you're a record label, you know, we'll, give it, we'll, we'll get it to 100 people in North America. There are 100 nobodies. There are 100 of your customers. Those people should be buying your record, not being given your record. You know, someone should, someone should give you a good case why they should deserve a promo. You know, as I say, 20 people maximum is who we send a free record to. And I, if, sorry. Think, sorry, I think there are elements of, of, of what we're seeing here that can be taken 
um, and, and, and transformed into a proper business model. You know, the fact that people do want to download stuff, the fact that people are, are paying for it on a monthly basis that runs probably through like whole years at a time. Um, and even that, you know, some stores, uh, well, not stores, but platforms that we saw like Mega Upload, they had actually legitimate companies advertising through them just because of the sheer volume of traffic that they were getting. Um, but again, that money was not going to the, to the right kind of people. So I think just uh, saying that we can allow it to stay there because it's reaching people is, is true, but it, it, it's just it's not the right way of doing it. But we can definitely take elements to, that, we, that we can see at work just because of the sheer scale of it, but really try to employ them into Beatport, whether it's some kind of subscription. I mean, I don't think we'll ever get an all-you-can-eat kind of thing for seven ninety nine a month, but it's you know, we could yeah. offer something, you know. <laughs> but I think also is that actually the, as I understand it, and you're the best person really to answer this, is in terms of the sort of actual licensing currently for music <coughs> wouldn't enable that to happen. So you can't even do it if you wanted to do it like that. It would have to radically change. But you're sort of, back to the sort of point in the question of, that it's a great way of marketing the artists and, you know, sort of say, let's get in, you know, Mark out there and important people know about him, go to his live events. Well, the next complaint you hear is that they're charging too much for the live events. And it's like, well, somehow that money has to come in for tour rooms to then be able to invest in new artists and drive through new, um, you know, quality uh, sort of experiences in sort of pushing music and boundaries forward. Otherwise, it's just the quickest route to the bottom and, and we're all going to go car music. It's, there's nothing good these days. So, so why are the sites still here? Uh, the sites essentially are still here at the moment because there's no one really tackling them. To actually tackle them uh, requires uh, time and effort and therefore some money to do so. Um, while there are uh, people like the BPI, IFPI and RIAA around the world who um, you know, are out there to sort of protect sort of the larger music body, the problem is that dance music still falls within a niche. And this, even in, you know, on some of these sites, you do get sites that are specialising in more sort of pop music as well. But the problem is to tackle each one individually, again, it's like swatting an individual fly rather than getting lots at one go. And so they have to sort of think, we've only got X amount of resource and therefore focus on it. And the problem is that because dance music is such a niche, and as you saw, like what the prog only site I put up, you know, it's specialist about that music, people who love that music, they rely on that, the search engines, you know, give them the opportunity to get their traffic and people come into it. So again, it's even smaller niche and therefore, you know, why should someone be putting money to stop that? And uh, I'm sure, you know, two of them don't want to go around funding taking down all of these sites because suddenly they wouldn't exist either. I um, mean, you know, it's just, it needs to be a concerted effort by the, the majority. Because no, what we've seen as well, we, you know, work very actively to try and disrupt them and, and, and shut down ones, you know, that are, are possible to shut down. But... It's whack-a-mole, so not only is it just fly squatting, but you know, you, you, you hit the mole and they disappear, but they know how much money they've been making. They don't want to just go quietly. They're going to come back, and it's under a different name. It's under a Russian server. You know, it, they're very aggressive, and you know, to, to be fair, some of them are pretty smart, you know, um, and, and, but they're, they're essentially criminal black market organizations. Um, so it, it, I don't know what the answer is, but we're doing stuff but there needs to be a lot more. Um, but it's, it's just not made easy for us. It um, can't just be you, this is it. It, it needs to be everyone actually it, coming together. And, and I'm hoping that you know, this is something with the sort of Stealing Room Success project that's coming with the AFEM, that actually we can get this by. And once people start to understand, you know, as we've been discussing today, actually how big an issue this is, and you know, your estimates, I think, in terms of the monetary value as well, it could well be conservative. Until we actually get the lid off it, we really don't know. But this could make a huge difference to dance music world and suddenly go, actually, downloads are really actually increasing. We always thought they were decreasing, but in reality, more and more people are becoming DJs. They want to get the content to be playing out and they're now buying it. Yeah, the, the, the funny thing is that the, 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 per, the, the person or the group that could have the most, most influence on stopping it is you lot. Is you lot. Not us. You lot. You, know, you tell your friends, I don't buy that store. It's crap. I buy a proper store. I go to Beatport and buy it. You know, you think to yourself, if you're, a, if, if you're a builder, would you go and buy your tools from Tesco's? No. You'd go to a proper tool hyper or proper shop. You know, you wouldn't... Don't accept crap. You know, that... Uh, and the, the great thing about being in this, in this industry, and one of the reasons I'm still in it, uh, I love it, is because you can make change. The collective can make a change. You know, there's been instances where, you know, I've, uh, I've known Jack for a while, where... The pressure from a few of us have changed what Beatport can do. 
And that's what's great about the dance music. It's a small in it, dance music industry. It's a small industry, and people do listen. We all listen, and 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 you know some of the some of the, the guys at the top of the infancy want to hear your views, but also really need your support because it's the majority of you lot that will go online and tell your friends, "Well, you bought it from there. You went on that site and bought it." Who are you? That, that's you know, and ultimately you're paying back in. If you're if you want to be a DJ as well, they're gonna have the same hundred records every week. Where are you finding something different? So you know, if I'm looking to book a DJ, I'm not gonna book a kid who buys his music off here because you sound the same as the other kid. I want to find someone that's digging deep to find music, going down their own path. You know, you won't get it from them sites. You know, and to be honest, we'll smell it a mile off. You know, we'll smell it if you're one of you know, one of these people that just buy off these sites. And that's the route you go, just a sheep. We're looking for shepherds. Stuart, do you think DJs that use these stores know that they're illegal stores? I think, I, I, I think there's a, a lot of education. I've got to be honest, when, you know, when I first initially spoke to Ben about it, I was very green to how big a problem it is. So, yeah, I think a lot of you are being seriously hoodwinked. Who likes being hoodwinked here? No, no, that's not a nice thing to be, is it? So, no, you know, uh, it's, it's a problem. There, 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 there's a lot. You know, you look at that site, uh, yeah, to, 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 a, to a, an 18-year-old kid coming, coming up, that's Beatport. Um, and it's also, it, it's also a buying method that he's used to. Oh, my mum does Netflix. She pays £10 a month and gets loads of document, oh, you know, dramas and stuff like that. Hey, I'll do the same thing. No, nah, that's not our culture. Our culture is about you as an individual finding your, your, your path within this scene. If, you know, if you're a DJ, finding the records that other people haven't got. You know, I, when I went and bought records, I come out of that record shop and I would scrape off the label, scrape everything off it. Because I, I didn't want the guy who's playing after me to know what I'm playing, because he'd go and buy it. I wanted to be different, and that's what Still all... Still happens in Berlin. <laughs> see, it, it, of course it does. That's why people look to Berlin to, uh, 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 as being you know, trend-setting, because they're, they're, they're staying true, you know. I always, I always bring it out in most of the conferences, dance music is, is a wheel, and it goes round, and we come back to some things that we've been do, we were doing 10 years ago. The main thing we can do is learn from them. Some of the things work, they don't need to be changed, you know. The, the promo process, that works. You know, going back to giving it to 100 people, that's not promo, that's just flooding the market. You know, that works, giving it to 20 influencers. You know, if, if you're a record label coming up and, that, and you want to get, the most out, out of your record, get close to those 20 people. You need to know who you're giving your records to. Who knows, you might get another record for it. You know, I said, I, 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 it's happened. You know, I've, I've, I've sent records to people, you know, um, and we've ended up getting a record. Dubfire, Dubfire is a, a classic example of that. You know, back in the days of Instant Messenger, I used to hit him up every Thursday. All right, where are you playing the weekend? What do you want? Do you want anything from us? Got this for you, this might work. Three weeks later, oh, I've got this. Do you want it? Yep, signed, signed a Dubfire record. So I'm interested, how different would your businesses be if your incomes were 10 times greater? Ooh, where would we be, Jack? Not here. <laughs> um, it, yeah, do you know what we would be? We'd be able, we, uh, no, we wouldn't. Uh, as a low, No, I wouldn't be selling myself on a beach. I'd be putting every penny... Exactly what we're doing we'd now, be, but just bigger and better. Exactly. And do you know what? I'd be able to offer some of the people in here more opportunity than I can at the moment. Exactly. You had to take chances. So you'd have a bit of room to actually say, I think this guy might do something. I'm going to take a bit of a chance on it. Sometimes that'll pay off and sometimes it won't. Now, you can't really. You have to go on something you've got such more of a dead cert on. I, I would love to take a... You know, we, we, we're very measured in our approach how we put out records. And sometimes, and just talking to Jack earlier, we have a two-week window to get that record out, extract the most that we can out of that record. Um, and... You know, that's a very short period of time. Back in the day, it's eight weeks. You had an eight-week promo period. You had a four-week kind of shelf life of the record. That's all gone. It's two weeks and we're on to the next. So, you know, if I did have more, some of this revenue coming through, I could take a chance on some up-and-coming up and coming artists. At the moment, it, the odds have got to be pretty stacked in my favour if I'm going to put the record out because it's, it, it's, it's expensive to do it, you know. Sorry, mate. Yeah, go for it. That, that's definitely, definitely a contributing factor. Look, I'll work with two weeks, no problem, I'll work with two weeks. But it's like trying to work with your hands tied behind your back with these lot. Do you know what I mean? So, 
Two weeks is workable. You know, it, 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 it's, it's not the end of the world. I, in, in some ways, I like the fast pace of, of music now. There's always something fresh. You know, you're not hearing the same thing over and over again. But again, when, you've got, when you're battling against this... So, so are you saying as well that piracy isn't just killing business, it's killing creativity and it's, it's killing a It's killing your opportunity. Okay. More than anything, it's killing your opportunity. So that's why collectively, come together, you know, you can stop it. We can, you know, we can chat and it becomes a financial thing. Oh, you want the money, we're going to... No, we don't want you to do it because we actually want to get into this scene and you're stopping us doing it. That's the truth of it. So in a race to the bottom because free is king. Exactly. Right. So what do we do? What next? Well, the next time you step up, step up to DJ after someone and uh, you know it's going on across the top of the Pioneers, it has sort of scrolling like a dub, 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 dot, zippy share or something like that, then you give them a good slap. You know, it's, uh, you it's know, not, really... It's not music. <laughs> yeah, those are just throw it out. But, it's, you know, it is a, an education thing. Part of it is, you know, we do need to understand what these sites look like. And so, if in doubt, really do check. There are very few really decent, legitimate stores out there. So, actually, properly check. Ask around. You know, other people will know. You know, quite, I'm sure, hey, if you haven't, be quite happy for you to ping in something and say, is this actually a legitimate store or is it too good to be true? And I go, no, it's definitely not because they're going to know that sort of thing. So, you know, it is that education side. Yeah, and I think from, from our side, you know, from, from Beatport's side as a store, there's, there is stuff that we're doing, um, you know, on the fraud side and, and, and actively, you know, payment gateways and, and stuff like that. But uh, an element of it is, is, is very difficult because we're not the content owners um, and if someone infringes on our, um, you know, our logo or our name, then it's a bit easier for us to kind of go after them and have a really good, strong case. But if they just kind of look a little bit like Beatport, but that's not enough for us to be able to do anything and be taken seriously, because all that content on there actually, you know, isn't owned by Beatport. It's owned by Tool Room and, and Spinning and, and Anjuna Beats and all the other, you know, popular labels who are really kind of getting taken advantage of here. But there's also stuff that they can do and an artist and the DMCA and you know sometimes people think oh I can't be bothered you know or it's too much and so actually nobody does anything and these sites can get away with just keep operating because they haven't been receiving DMCA takedowns and stuff like that but the it takes a lot of momentum to build enough of these kind of takedowns to be sort of taken seriously and you see some of the numbers that come around about you know billion links that have been taken down by Google and stuff like that but collectively they need to do more and, and, and Google probably needs to be held more responsible not just for music but for, for film and everything that when you put Mark Knight download in it, it sort of comes up with something well one of these unfortunately So who was this, you said? So I haven't come across it at all. Uh, yeah, and we work with the IFPI in the UK and the BPI as well. Um, but no, that's not something that um, we've come across at all. Well, I should speak to Pipku, who's the head of fraud in the UK, who actually, they don't do that either. Um, and they are tasked with protecting the intellectual property of the UK sort of creative industries through the IPO office as well. So if that actually is something that we really could be turned to, I'd be interested to have a quick chat and see if there is something we could introduce to them. Um, you know, but I mean, like, so sort of slight or blatant sort of blag here in terms of just for a pound a month, you can stick a track into our system and get it being protected on our sort of cheaper option. But at least that's doing something, getting some notices sent to some of the sites that do have the content on there. But in terms of tackling these illegitimate stores properly, it does need to be a conservative thing. And I think really there it's that's where I push to actually a membership of the AFEM because join together with a little bit of membership monetary funds there, we can actually direct as a team and target these sites and actually get rid of the ones that really are causing the problems for everyone. And as you very rightly said, it's the content owners give the copyright sort of ability for us to then go along and say, right, we can shut that site. You can't because it's not got Beatport on it. Yeah. And some of these sites don't don't come up on Google, though, right? There's, no, there's no, a, a lot of them actually do. just... There's, there's a little thing you can put on there called a robots.txt file, and you can go, no. 
and then they just won't appear. We find them by, by other me methods. And in fact, there's um, uh, Anna Wall, who's a DJ friend of ours and sort of works with us now and again. She, uh, she got sent a, a, a message on Facebook, and she said not, not to be the only one. And there's this woman actively promoting, as a PR agency, this uh, service where, you, again, you pay your $30 a month kind of thing, and it has a special promo system, getting all these latest tracks. And again, entirely illegal, but the domain just didn't exist unless you go to a very special part of it. Totally hidden away, and you'd only find it, but they are actively going around promoting it as a legitimate service, supporting the artist, supporting the industry. So, go. Is that the one with the grey world? It sort of goes into, yeah. And that, that is actually, you know, this, do take heed of this. It is um, so worth checking it out because it really does show the sort of contrast that you really will end up with. If money's not being reinvested into it, the labels haven't got the opportunity to push up new talent and it's just downhill all the way. And then we'll get to the bottom and go, oh, crap. That, that, that's great. What would be great for you to do would be to pick up the phone to them, be put, say, give me, give, me, give me the label managers, your top 100 independent labels, and send it to me because I haven't heard of that. Yeah, I, we, we, we do pretty well. You, we, the you're not doing that well because I need I need to know that. <laughs> I'll, I'll help. Listen, I'll help you all day long. I'll push your video to a million people, but you need to come and talk to me or come and talk to these because this is this, this is this is the seed. This is the seed. You can go high level Facebook or whatever. If we put it out to you guys and say, guys, this ain't cool. Yeah. How long did it take you to reach that track? How, how long did it take you to get that sound? Oh, and God. Then try to connect people to the time it takes you to create something and just using a genuine product. Definitely. Well, I think through the network of all the members at AFEM, it, it's really worth uh, having a good chat to Mark after because that, that network will filter down through all of the people you need to, and it is well worth uh, seeing. And certainly, we've been, you know, we pushed it on uh, Twitter yeah, and, and Facebook. Yeah, it's about adding the yeah. authenticity of it and, you know, yeah. for, the, for the fan, you know, to hear the message from somebody that they trust as well. Yeah, we, we, would, we would push that message all day long. So I've got a final question before we, we open up to, to more questions from the audience, which is, if, if DJs are key to this, and pointing to legitimate sites is one option, but how do you change all the DJs' mentality and activity and buyer behavior? Because that's, that's what this is all about. It's getting five million DJs around the world defined as people that obtain music to play publicly to go to all the legal stores, not the illegal stores. Again, I'd find it hard to call them people DJs. I'd call them thieves. <laughs> you're not. If you're asking how I would view it as a label owner or you know a talent booker, I would. You don't even appear on my radar because you're not putting in. You know, going back to the, the analogy with the builder, would I employ a builder who turned up with tools from Tesco's? No, I fucking wouldn't. <laughs> I would, you know, I'd employ a DJ that, that, that knows his stuff, that, that, that has done it credibly, because, you know, our, our scene is built on, on credibility, you know, and going back to it, it's our culture, own your own culture, own it, you know, so if, if stuff like this appears, no, we don't want that, you know, that's the, again, going back to times, it's a great thing, we've got, you know, it's not like any other industry that I, I've ever been party to or seen, you know, we've got this kind of, closed community and you know now more than ever is the time for us to come together and say no that's not what's credible and make them people the odd one out yeah and i think these kind of campaigns and and and, and that kind of message really needs to hit young people because the, the person who considers himself a dj and who personally probably doesn't want to have their own intellectual properties and creative works end up on these sites but doesn't have an issue with using them themselves that person's probably gone beyond being, you know, been out to save them. 
but it's about the next person who hasn't reached that site yet, who, you know, who will. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's where these kind of campaigns uh, are really vital. And when we probably do need a lot to do a lot more to kind of be on the same page together, to be working together. Closing words from you, Ben. Um, we did a quick thing with our uh, ambassador, Goldie, who came on board and did an interview with DJ Meg, and it made me uh, laugh where sort of responses after he was talking about piracy was very much, but I can't afford all the music I want. I can't, I can't <laughs> afford a Ferrari, that's why I don't drive one. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> life's a bitch, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Or I'd hustle till I can go and get it. You know, that's what this is about. It's not, everything isn't there on a plate for you, you know. And to be honest, the people that will give you the opportunity do not want people like, you know, we don't want to be around people like that. We want people that are graft, that are willing to, to, to hone their career, to invest in their career, you know, because that's what we're looking for. We're looking to offer people careers in dance music, be it an artist, be it the people that work for me. Yeah, that's what I want to offer. I, it's because that's sustainable. That means that, that wheel I was talking about earlier, that means it keeps going, keeps turning. Someone else can jump on it with us. We can c carry on and keep going. Bringing something to the industry, not taking from it. Yeah, it's, again, it's our culture. Protect it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. should. No. So uh, I think we'll, we'll move over to questions from the audience, please. Anyone? Ooh. Go. I like it. I like that. Yep. He might as well go around your house and steal out, out of your bedroom, mightn't he? Because he's taking your revenue. And, that, and, that's, and, that's, and that's, you know, you, that's how you need to treat these people. You're not, you're not one of us. You're not yeah. one of us. No, I, I, no, I, I, I hear it, and, and yeah, it, it's tough because I want to, it, you know, if you're only having a relationship, I have to be honest, more and more now, you know, we really need to get to that. No, if we're going to sign a record we, uh, and invest in that person, you're in the office, let's meet you, let's find out how you tick, let, let's see what you're about, because, you know, if I'm going to make that kind of investment, but you're right, it, you know, it's tough, it's, it's, it's muddy in the playing field, we don't, you know, and, it, and it's frightening because, I, I don't know. I, I don't know who the the artists are. Where you're getting it from? It's not. It's not good. It's not. It's not sustainable for us. And if it was authenticated as well, it means that actually it's not just someone pinning a logo on the site and that means that they've accredited. It doesn't work like that. The trust pilot thing he was talking about as well is when you click on it, it then takes you back, it actually authenticates, proves that this site really has followed that. And that can be you know, controlled remotely so sites can't fake it up. So yeah, and I think that's really interesting. And it, it needs to be, I guess, the education. You know, we can make ourselves look even more legitimate, but it's, it's the step beyond that about you know, the person going to a site where it doesn't have that for them to know, should I be here or not? Um, you know, for, for I'll still shop on a site that doesn't have a trusted 
you know, pilot because not everybody has that, even legitimate sites. So, yes, it's great, but there's just so much that needs to be to be done. <laughs> I would. I, I have to be honest. You know, really, that's 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 pretty immediate. We could do that pretty much tomorrow, and I would be <coughs> the first one to be tweeting about it, and the first one to be Facebooking about it. It just. It, it just it ju it just it just makes sense again. Now, what I like again, a collective, someone in the audience giving us an idea. Let's go. And the scene, the scene contains that. Like you say, it's a small scene. Yeah. You know, it only takes twenty labels, twenty major labels on Beatport to push that out on their social media. Tell me a DJ that hasn't heard about it. This time next week. Well, well, exactly. We do. We we have the power to do that tomorrow. Could you imagine if we were sitting here and this is a banking conference that would take about six years to go through? <laughs> we can do it tomorrow. <laughs> we can do it tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll commit to making that happen next uh, week. I'm, again, as I said, I'm from... You heard it here, next week. Yeah, next week. week. I know, I'm phoning in about an hour's time. Next question, and thank you for that one. Yeah. I, I didn't, f for me, what I, I hear, it is frustrating because, yeah, we don't probably talk as much as we should. What is refreshing that's happened recently, you know, over the last year or so is, is AFEM. Now, we did, we, Mark and his organisation are in the middle. We joined there because we're so busy trying to squeeze every penny out of everything. Yeah, I'd love to have time to educate, you know, pick up the phone and they go, hey, guys, let's all get together. Let's, that's what Mark's doing, and very, very successfully. But it, it's every part, every single person has a part to play in it. Ridney coming up with the idea, right? Yeah, I get that. Great idea. I'll support it. BPI, yeah, we'll back it. Look at us, we're working as a collective. It's our culture. We're owning it. That's the model. We're we'll marking again with Mark in the middle, who, who he bats things backward and forward to us, to Jack. We're getting a we're getting a pretty cool little network here, and. You know, and things that we can change again, really, really quickly, really, really efficiently, and we can educate. You know, when I look around this room, I realize there aren't many 18-year-olds in here, so it's, it falls on us to educate those 18-year-olds coming up. But I think you guys have got the most amazing network. Because yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it worked. <laughs> yeah. But you could do something along the same lines as something so simple. Networking together. You don't what that would do is it would start educating the younger lot who are looking out for those people as idols. We do the, the kind of the way it's been it's working and you're right, it is frustrating. But if you think of labels like dominoes, yeah. once one of us goes, we all start to tip. But AFEM acts as the flick. He flick Mark these organizers flicks us and then we'll get going. But we we, we, we need Input like from Ridney saying there, let's get a logo that would work for me. He's a consumer. He's that works for me. So if that works for him, it would work for the majority, you know majority of people. So it, again, it's about these kind of places where we can all get together. We can all constructively moan about what's 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 good and what's bad. And believe me, now I'm more confident than I was than I've ever been that we have the organisations, the cam camaraderie. To make things change, and I think if the the, the ethics of the the message can be really strong and positive, yeah, that's that's kind of hopefully where you would come in because 
it, it's actually harder than you think to get a DJ to say, I, I buy my stuff from Beatport. You know, that's, that's Beatport's marketing. You know, that's what we're trying to do all the time. And it's, it might seem easy, but it's, it's really difficult, <laughs> um, you know, because they're always doing a million things. But if there's this really sort of strong message that's going to be attached to that, you know, that could, be, that could actually be the difference between having 10 people kind of supporting it or having 100 really strong eyes supporting it because they're like, okay, the message isn't just about sort of beat port, it's about the legitimacy of it and it's about the future of our, our, our livelihoods, you know, to get together and have a really strong campaign. We, but, and we, but one, another thing, with more, you know, I can't stress how, how tight the margins are. And, you know, with Marx, it, we could be, it, it's 10 times. If that money was in the pot, I could do some really cool free things for all you fans. You know, I could put on a night, all come, it's free. Do you know why? Because people are downloading my music again. Hooray! Or, do you know, once a month, hey guys, you followed us all for the year, thanks for that, here's a free album. At the moment, these boys are stopping me doing it. Because they're extracting every penny and making it so tough to turn a living or go and find new, new artists or give back to you lot for supporting. Can't do it. You know, I've constantly got to say, bye, 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 bye. I'd like to break that with, here, I'll have it. And I think now that we've got a free party committed to you by Stuart, um, unfortunately, we, we, we've, we've run out of time. Just so. got to take these all down. <laughs> Just want to thank the panellists and thank you all for listening. Cheers.